we are a uh, liberal arts college uh, that is located about 90 minutes due west of central Tokyo. So for anyone that's been to Japan um, before, um, and you've, if you've been to Shinjuku Station, you would know uh, where we are. So um, yeah, we are, uh, it's a four year degree that is taught entirely in English. Um, we have, uh, we offer a Bachelor of International Liberal Arts with majors in Global Business and Economics, Political Science, Interdisciplinary Art and Japan Studies. Um, you know, within each of those uh, four majors, there are academic pathways that you can pursue. And this uh, leads to, you know, careers in everything from high finance through to working as a independent uh, artist. Okay. All right. Okay, let me uh, just uh, see if I can give that to you again. Let's try it this way, Amit. Um, okay, so there's a, I mean, uh, <laughs> let's talk about liberal arts and why it is, um, you know, an important education for, you know, the 21st century. Um, you know, might, some people might have a misconception about liberal arts that it is fine arts, for example, or uh, purely humanities, um, but it's really a philosophy around education. So we are talking about art in the sense of a learned skill. So um, a liberal arts degree is not very strictly vocationally focused in the way that, you know, I'm going to go to university and become a chemical engineer, or I'm going to become an um, accountant, or I'm going to, you know, um, you know, study medicine, for example, you know, I want to become a nurse or a doctor, for example. Um, it is a broader education. You are being taught how to be critical, creative, independent and global in your thinking. Okay, that's interesting. Um, the purpose of this, of course, is that, you know, you cannot be automated out of a job where you are able to relearn um, you know, skills as you go or to get a broader education as you go. Um, and think about it this way, you know, uh, we have this issue in Australia about how many people, um, you know, I am from Australia, so I'll say this from an Australian perspective. There is an issue with how many people, say, graduate from law school every year or how many people graduated as journalists, for example, a few years ago. Um, and the world also faces this issue around, I think, engineers in particular. How many lawyers does the world actually need? You know, how many engineers does the world actually need? And then when you have um, aging populations in many uh, countries, you know, those people are not retiring at a rate that the number of people graduating in specific um, occupations uh, can fill, that will have vacancies to fill those roles. So. Um, Having a, a job where you, know, you are able to change your role several times in life, um, having a, a good education, a rounded education in that way can prevent you from you know, going to, you know, as I think many people do, going to university for four years to study a particular profession and then finding out that there aren't actually vacancies in those roles and they can do something completely different. Um, so, you know, that is a little bit of the philosophy around liberal arts. Um, you've got specific characteristics as well, like smaller class sizes. You are guaranteed to get more one-on-one -on -one attention from your uh, professors. You have a broader availability of um, 
of electives than in a traditional you know, in, in another kind of university. So, you know, in many universities, it's very hard to fill your credit requirements if you are not very strictly focused on teaching taking classes from your major and your minor. Whereas, at somewhere like ICLA and, and like many other liberal arts colleges, you're encouraged to take electives either from other majors that we offer or from you know um, the subject areas that we have like for us in particular we also teach data science we teach psychology and sociology we teach you know more math more coding classes we offer a lot of cultural uh, workshops in japanese arts and um, and martial arts as well so our students can you know learn that and also learn japanese language as we are in in japan so you know and it's encouraged to do that because those again those broader horizons they allow you to problem solve from many different uh, viewpoints which is important um you know a little history of uh of liberal arts obviously it started um in ancient greece you know the socratic kind of tradition of western education um, and this is a time where, you know, um, where arts and culture were really, um, you know, melded. So, so I'm just going to see my notes on my other computer while I talk to you guys. <laughs> you know, a time of, you know, somewhere where, you know, take, take a figure like Pythagoras, for example, where, you know, he is a mathematician and very obviously known. You've all had to study uh, the Pythagoras theorem in, uh, in school, but, you know, he was also... Uh, very, you know, a philosopher and a mystic as well. So he, you know, melded these traditions. And it's times in history, in human history, where art and science are, you know, valued equally, um, you know, like the Renaissance, like, you know, past the Middle Ages, where, and ancient Greece, where society has flourished all around the world. All, all societies have flourished. Um, you know, so it, it is a European... Um, sort of uh, philosophy and it came over to eventually to North America. I just want to read this quote from um, Wilhelm von Humboldt. Um, he is the sort of uh, he is sort of recognized as the sort of I guess the father of liberal arts in the, in the modern sense. Um, he uh, built the sort of Prussian um, educational model in you know that later was obviously it's now Germany um, but this became the model for higher education in North America in places like Harvard, Princeton, Yale etc so um, you know an education that goes beyond just pure vocational training as we're saying um, so he's sort of speaking I believe this was in around 1865 or so he says in a letter to the Prussian king is there are undeniably certain kinds of knowledge that must be of a general nature, and more importantly, a certain cultivation of the mind and character that nobody can afford to be without. People obviously cannot be good crafts workers, merchants, soldiers, or businessmen unless, regardless of their occupation, they are good, upstanding, and according to their condition, well-informed human beings and citizens. If this basis is laid through schooling, vocational skills, are easily acquired later on and a person is always free to move from one occupation to another as so often happens in life think about that again this is a guy writing in 1865 of you know professional middle class people you know and a person is always free to move from one occupation to another as so often happens in life so in a concern that we have today in 2022 about how you will you know have multiple careers in your lifetime um, was the concern of people all the way back then so nothing is new again <laughs> and you know liberal arts sets you up to have that journey there was research done out of georgetown university that looked at the return on investment of a liberal arts degree versus a other four-year degree in the states and they found that on average a um, liberal arts degree returned over a million dollars to usd um, 
to a graduate of a liberal arts degree compared to about $750,000 for a graduate of a similar four-year degree, um, four-year university. So what that shows you is that liberal arts graduates go further in their careers when you look at the full 40-year span of, of somebody's working life. You see this from the kinds of people that have graduated from uh, liberal arts universities. I think Ahmed was talking about this um, just as I finally managed to jump on, but people like, um, you know, Susan Wozniacki, so the CEO of YouTube, people like, um, I think Bob Eisner was a former CEO of Disney, um, like many Supreme Court judges in the States. And although he didn't graduate, uh, actually uh, Howard Schultz, uh, also Starbucks CEO, all went to liberal arts colleges. Um, and although he did not graduate uh, from a liberal arts college, he only stayed there for a couple of years. Perhaps the, the most famous uh, example is Steve Jobs as well. So, you know, it is um, you know, getting those different perspectives, being able to synthesize information in different ways through this broad education leads you to make better career decisions, better investment decisions, and overall have a more fulfilling career. So, that's a bit about liberal arts. Um, there are now in the modern day. Yeah. What does this lead to? So, um, something that you will find is common amongst, um, I think, all liberal arts colleges is the idea that you do a common curriculum in your uh, first year, and then you choose your major at the end of that first year. So you declare your major. So this is really important because you get an idea of what it would be like to actually study the major before you fully commit to it, um, which I think is fantastic. And again, you've getting that broader education as well. Um, so um, I think we're probably coming up to about time here, but um, also again, smaller class sizes, so you get better one-on-one uh, -on -one attention from um, your professors. Many of our exchange students uh, that come from larger universities uh, to ICLA remark that they are surprised that the professors know the students' names because they don't, don't feel that their professors know their names back at their home university. Um, you know, and you've got a much broader choice of electives as well. But just to conclude, and again, sorry for the technical difficulties, um, it is really important that we um, as a society are able to communicate across disciplines. Um, you guys are probably well aware of, you know, uh, the SDGs, uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I do not see how we actually accomplish those without being able to communicate across disciplines, bring people together, have intellectual discussions where we consider other people's viewpoints empathetically and come together to, you know, face the challenges that we, um, as a species, all face by climate change. Um, we live in a very interconnected and interdependent world. If you are of any doubt about that, I, I don't know how you are having, <laughs> we've all lived through the pandemic. We've seen the disruption to, the, to supply chains globally. Um, we're seeing the impact that, you know, disruptions in one market can have on food prices, how that affects the most vulnerable in our societies. It is really important that we come together um, and we address these things with cultural awareness and cultural empathy. You know, we live in a, unfortunately, you know, increasingly divided world, um, thanks to social media, but, you know, we can overcome this. Uh, education, global education, this is the way that we do it. Being a global citizen is incredibly important. So I am, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to, you know, meet with um, liberal arts universities from around the world. I really do think that this style of education um, puts you in the driving seat to hopefully um, try and solve some of the, the problems that we face. So thank you for being here. Congratulations.
Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Um, you know, I, I just have one request. So we, we really could not, <laughs> uh, you know, show your presentation. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're feeling a little bad. So am I. But let's let's make the most of this session by, you know, keeping the floor open for any questions. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a, a request to students. If you have any questions that you'd like Mr. Daniel to take, uh, you know, most certainly post them in the chat box and we will, you know, uh, take those questions up. And while we wait for the, the set of questions, you know, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you the first question, right? Sure. So, you know, um, as we move forward in the 21st century, the, you know, there's mm. so much happening, you know, on the tech front, you know, we keep hearing things like, okay, uh, the metaverse is, is slowly taking shape and a lot of mm. developments on that side. Um, AI is, is uh, you know, automating a lot of processes. People are worried that they might lose jobs. And, uh, and from that perspective, um, do you think uh, an, an education in liberal arts um, is, 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 a, is a good move, you know, because if you're mm. preparing for a job that may not exist today, uh, would you say that liberal arts is a good starting point? I, I would. Um, I mean, we, you, you spoke about uh, sort of data and AI. I mean, that's something that um, we actually teach and uh, we, we teach data science. You can take data science as an elective. Um, at ICLA, you can learn coding, you know, learn about machine learning, how to write algorithms. This is part of the course. We, we feel it's important, but we teach data science from a very liberal arts and humanist perspective because, um, you know, it, we live in this world where, okay, there's a lot of data, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of, unfortunately, you know, surveillance capitalism out there, the, right. you know, the, the whole um, nature of our economy is moving towards, you know, um, right. using data Absolutely. on you that you give out for free in order to sell you things, right? But how are we using that ethically? You know, are we using that ethically? How do we, you know, is there a, a better way that we could be using AI and data um, rather than to sell, you know, things on Amazon, but, you know, how could we use that to, to solve some of the problems that we that we face? So, you know, we address these issues and these challenges in our course um, because we believe it's important. Um, now, you talk about automation. I mean, I, I think that the one thing that AI, you know, um, <laughs> cannot do is, uh, you know, replicate realistically like the, the creative process of, of the human mind so you know that i believe fully that the future belongs to those who can write um and that can you know produce uh content reports you go further in government if you can write well if you want to do that you go further in corporations if you can write well you, you can communicate well if you can communicate empathetically um cross-culturally you know you will end up in a better career that's right. that's that's honestly how i believe you cannot automate that um you can on the other hand and i've done this in corporations that i've worked in you know bring in robotic process automation tools and get you know two systems to talk to each other and sure. suddenly the people that were doing a lot of paper pushing or whatever they they don't have a role anymore you know uh, it's an unfortunate thing so you really do want to give yourself the best education to not be automated out of a role Fantastic. or that, you know, as, um, as uh, you know, um, Humboldt said, you know, that you've got an educational basis and that you can relearn vocational skills down Fantastic. the line. If you're very narrowly trained to do one thing and that job then doesn't exist 5, 10, 15 years in the future, right? you don't have an educational basis of being able to self-learn or to, to even see which direction you should go in next, then, you know, you are pretty dead in the water. So, yeah. okay, there are a lot of questions coming in and, uh, you know, <laughs> um, may I request that, you know, since there are so many questions that you try and take up as many questions as you can, but keep each answer brief, because if you do that, then we can actually mm. answer more questions. Okay. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> right. So um, there are some questions which students are asking with respect to ICLA. Mm -hmm. And I would sincerely request that, you know, we have the ICLA booth available. So please pop over there, you know. Uh, so in terms of what majors are offered ICLA, you could definitely get that answer at the ICLA booth. Yeah. Where the ICLA offers scholarships, again, you can get yes. that answer at the ICLA booth. Uh, there is um, 
a question from Aditya and he's saying, you know, what do you think is the scope uh, for liberal arts in India? <laughs> so I know it's a very India specific question, but uh, yeah. um, anything you can say would, would help. I think you have a very famous uh, liberal arts college called OP Jindal, north of yes. Delhi, yes. for example. Um, yes. It's quite famous. It's a partner of ours, actually, um, right. for exchange. Um, look, India is a big tech country, you know, but again, you think about how do you use that? Um, you know, we marry, um, you know, data science and coding courses with entrepreneurship, with sure. economics, with business or with political science because, so that you've got a, you're in the driving seat of how that data gets used. Simple. Uh, there's uh, another question that's coming from Gia and she's asking, mm -hmm. what would you advise, you know, uh, for an Indian student who wants to study abroad? How can they stand out, you know, I guess in terms of their application or in terms of their, you know, prospect of being accepted at a uni? Yeah, I think every university wants to know why you chose to apply to that university specifically. So have a very good idea about why it is that you want to go there, study the courses, study the professors, have a look into it. Um, and be able to articulate that both in your personal statements and in your interview essays, uh, you know, interview questions and answers and, you know, in your scholarship essay, if you're putting one of those out as well. Fantastic. Okay, there is an interesting question that uh, Sakshi has asked us and she's saying, mm -hmm. you know, um, she was talking about how sometimes there's a stigma surrounding liberal arts and she mm -hmm. feels that it's not, you know, accurate, you know. Um, so she's been trying to explain to people why choosing liberal arts is a good, you know, career decision or a good choice in terms of your, uh, you know, this sub study stream. So anything that you can tell her? Look, um, there is very little difference between the content. If you're going to study uh, business and economics, if you do it at a liberal arts college, which is a university or at a university that has 40,000 students. The difference is that you will get more one-on-one -on -one attention from your professors and you will not be sitting in your macroeconomics 101 course in the dark with 400 other people in first year. You'll be doing it with 15 other people and you'll have much wider and deeper availability to debate the issues, to ask questions and to get, therefore, a better education. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, the best part about liberal arts education, it gives you a very balanced view of the world mm. because you're exposed yes. to so many disciplines. And of course, you know, another thing I was reading, you know, and I found really interesting about liberal arts is that no two students have the same journey, you know, uh, depending upon the electives and the you know specialization that a student chooses, uh, as the student traverses through the university, he, his or her st study journey and experience is a little different. So that's really interesting. Yes, and in fact, we have a we have a question around that point, you know, mm. as to how many uh, you know majors can be taken at the same time, or is it a possible to take a double major and a minor? We, and, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. We we don't we don't offer a double major at the moment, okay. and in Japan there aren't really minors, so it's just a slightly different you know system here. Okay, um, other universities may have different sure. that you know that are presenting today might have a different um correct I, there's no uniform answer for that daniel I really mean, every isn't. university has their own uh, uh protocol or you yeah. know the way they do things right but okay. um you know you're able to take electives from like you said like you know you have a lot more freedom to craft the educational journey that you're on at a liberal arts college than at right. another university because of how tight the, those credit requirements are going to be to do right. A, a you know, double major, but there's nothing stopping you doing, you know, global business and economics, for example, and doing a lot of our, say, Japan studies or interdisciplinary arts or political science, you know, classes, you can study psychology, you can learn coding, you know, right. you, you, it's way broader, it's more, and it gives you a much better basis to go out into the world and, and you know, to get a, you know, to start your career. So. Okay. One more question. I hope you're not getting tired because <laughs> I'll no. keep them coming. Uh, Diksha is asking, uh, you know, I guess she wants to be a policymaker. And her question is, can you study liberal arts and public administration together? Um, so um, one of the sort of pathways, you know, we sort of group our courses into sort of pathways. And within our pol sci major, there is a public administration grouping. Um, like, and there also is a, an international relations grouping and a comparative politics grouping. So, you know, you'll study courses from two or all three of those. So, 
likewise in, in global business and economics, there's a pure economics sort of line. There's more of a international business marketing kind of line and then there's a finance line. So it just depends how much math you want to do <laughs> on that front. But um, And someone else has asked, you know, like, about postgraduate study. Oh. Right. A liberal arts degree is a great springboard into postgrad. About a third of our students go on to it um, and at very good universities as well. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, we have another question regarding the prospects, I guess, the career prospects. If, mm. uh, you know, again, this is from Sakshi. She's saying, you know, if she wants to pursue a career in industrial and organizational psychology. So mm. what, are, what are the prospects for a grad who's, you know, studied some subjects like that? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, HR is all industrial organizational psychology. So, you know, I used to work in human relations, um, human resources, sorry. Um, so or people, as a lot of organizations will now call it. Um, yeah, having a, a knowledge of psychology and organizational behavior is extremely important for that. And um, yes, we, we offer both of those. So. Perfect. So you answered Arunash's question where, you know, Arunash was wondering whether liberal arts is, is a good enough base, you know, to pursue any kind of postgrad. And you know, the fact that it's it's liberal arts, you can actually, uh, you, you study so many different subject areas. The answer is a resounding yes. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, there's a question from Isha and she's asking mm. if she takes a bachelor's in business and then a postgrad or a master's in liberal mm. arts, what kind of jobs could she be looking at? Really depends on what you majored in. Um, I think a lot of people would sort of do it perhaps the the other way, that they would do a right. BA or, you know, the, the, do the, the liberal arts bachelor and then they would go on to do perhaps an MBA or, uh, you know, master's in economics or, you know, then go perhaps go on to a doctor if they want to do that. So I think, yeah, probably flipping it is... Uh, how most people would do it. Okay. I think there's a, um, a question from Teresa where she's asking if you, uh, and I guess this is, seems to be a more ICLA specific question. Do you offer practical learning opportunities? Yes. Um, or, or is it just about, you know, theoretical learning and grounding where you're just learning from books? Um, it's a mix. So, and it, again, it depends on the course that you're taking. Um, but, you know, we have a lot of, in the interdisciplinary arts major, there's a lot of practical, you know, um, fine art, sculpture, graphic design, um, you know, creative writing courses, um, just naming a few off the top of my head. Right. We offer a lot of cultural workshops. They're like 10 week um, courses where you can learn Japanese art forms like, you know, tea ceremony, flower arranging, or how to play a Japanese musical instrument like the koto or the shakuhachi. Uh, we offer like, we do like martial arts courses so you can learn like karate, judo, aikido. <laughs> They're very practical. You throw people around. So. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get more practical than that, right? <laughs> hands on, completely hands very on. Hands on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so we have a question from Ivancha and she's, you know, doing her BA in geography and economics. Okay. And she wants to kind of go ahead and, you know, pursue a specialization at the master's level in economics. Uh, yeah. But she's wondering if there are any kind of fresh options that are available to such kind of graduates. That's really interesting. Uh, that is outside of my speciology. But um, I would say I do have a good friend who has a master's in GIS. That is a really interesting field. Um, I think it's called uh, Geographical Information Systems. Uh, he mastered in that. And uh, <laughs> then do another master's in uh, in uh, what is it? project management. He just finished that. I don't know. He just likes having degrees. So and maybe student debt. But <laughs> yeah, right. uh, no, he did. That was quite interesting. And uh, he was working um, both in um, in mining uh, construction in uh, Western Australia and also in government in uh, town planning, etc. That was quite interesting. But again, it's not my. I'm sorry, it's not my field of expertise. No problem. no problem. Someone's asking a question about what you need to qualify for scholarships. Again, there's no standard answer for that. It depends no. on the university. University. Radhika has come back to us if industrial psychology is similar to HR. Uh, I think you already answered that, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, it's not only HR, but you know, there's there's a lot more to industrial psychology. Um, and um, 
there's another question regarding, uh, again, Diksha is asking about whether liberal arts allows you to have field work or do you have to do research papers? I think you, you actually answered that in a way, Daniel. It all depends on the subject that you're it choosing. depends on the subject. Right. And then in the fourth year, you will do a graduation research project as part of okay. it. So it's like, it's sort of the, you know, honours kind of year of, uh, you know, Australia or Britain in that respect, yeah. Perfect. We have a question from Shambhavi, and I think, uh, you know, this is a relevant question for the audience that we have here, because many people may be coming from a commerce background. So mm -hmm. if you do come from a commerce background, like you're pursuing a Bachelor of Commerce, can you transition to liberal arts? Is that difficult? Um, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it's a strange thing to answer, I think. It's just, I would say it's just commerce. I mean, for us, I would say it's commerce taught in a different style, like that you um have greater access to take um, courses outside of commerce you can also easily learn how to code you can do data science you can learn psychology as part of it and you know if you have an artistic uh bent you can take you know music classes or art classes to blow off a bit of steam as well so um it's just a different way of doing it that doesn't um you know damage your degree at all um, the content is very similar but again it's smaller class sizes so it's a different style of teaching all right so i hope I i'm answering that correctly but yeah right <laughs> <laughs> i know i know some of these questions are not easy you know i think the students are really not being easy on you daniel you know <laughs> the, the, the questions are flying in thick and fast and uh this is just a word to students that um i know we had a late start so i i'm gonna take maybe two questions more yeah, um, yeah but you know daniel is still here with us so if you'd like yeah. to ask a few more questions please head over to the icla booth yes, so we'll just take a few more questions and i think some of them are really pointed uh so i'm trying to uh pick and choose the ones which are a little bit more open-ended mm -hmm. uh so someone's asking about you know can i go from bachelor of data science to liberal, uh, liberal arts again all of these are very um pointed question it depends on the case-to-case -case kind of scenario mm -hmm. um but if you pursue a career in political science, I mean, if you study political science, what kind of careers can you pursue? Well, I actually used to work for an Australian senator. I was okay. uh, for about seven years uh, and I was uh, politically active for much longer than that. Um, so I knew a lot of political science graduates. Um, yeah, you, you go into public policy, um, could work for a party, you could work in government, you could work for NGOs um, nationally, internationally. It's a very open-ended um, career. And again, it's one of those important things where you learn how to write, you know. So, and doing it at a liberal arts college where you're going to get also not just, you know, politics, but you're going to learn economic micro and macroeconomics you have to learn how to research um, various topics in order to write public policy right in order to inform decision makers and leaders you know if you got to write speeches like i did um, for a living um <laughs> you know and i didn't uh, <laughs> i didn't study pulse i actually um but uh yeah I, I know a lot of people that have and have gone very far doing that so yeah it is one of those degrees that um really opens up a lot or one of those majors really that opens up a lot of different avenues right it's 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 really amazing i mean it's not just studying what you want to study but the fact that you're in a liberal arts kind of setup you're exposed to different subject areas related subject areas which allow you to do the core uh, you know uh, subject that you're interested in a little better yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about the, the job opportunities in the public health space? Any comments on that, Daniel? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, public health. So, you know, sc scope of careers for a student who's, you know, interested in public health programs. Public health. That's interesting, that one. Uh, again, it's um, not my area of expertise but, and um, not really something that, that we offer uh, too much. But again, yeah. Um, that's you know more like you want to work in the health department or something of, of your country or you want to work in international development perhaps you know okay. in ngos yeah would international students be considered for a job in politics <laughs> that's a good yeah, one uh, uh you know it's interesting yeah, yeah yeah i mean obviously uh many countries uh 
you know, <laughs> if you want to stay there and work, um, you know, you might not be able to run <laughs> for a seat. Yeah, you could work behind the scenes, but if you want to work, run for office, you have a better chance doing it in your own country, right? But, um, perhaps, but, you know, um, I, I think, uh, I'm, I'm interesting. I'm not, I'm, there are actually uh, in Japan, quite rare, but it does happen that there are um, people that have come here and taken up Japanese citizenship and have run right. uh, for local council seats, for mayors. I don't know that we have a foreign governor yet or a member <laughs> of parliament, but um, you just think that, you know, Japan is 99% Japanese people or, you know, dis uh, of birth, so um, that's not surprising. Um, but I will just touch on the uh, the job opportunities here in Japan for a minute, if I if I could. Um, sure, please do. Say that um, compared to many G7 and G20 nations, Japan has a very favourable immigration um, laws, uh, and it is very easy for a company to sponsor a work visa of somebody that has graduated from a Japanese university. It's very easy to switch over from. A student visa to a working visa once you you know you graduate and you do that um, many of our graduates leave with multiple job offers Fantastic. from companies because that is a, a big part of Japanese corporate culture is to give students guarantees of employment prior to them uh, graduating so a lot of students will do job hunting activities in their sort of third and fourth years of universities a lot of internships here. There is that's, no limit to the great. number of years you can stay here. Um, one, you know, as long as you've got a job, you pay your taxes, pay into the national <laughs> health and pension plan, um, and you know, don't and don't do anything naughty. Uh, you can stay here for a very long time. There's a there's a points and time based path to permanent residency in Japan as well. Um, so yeah, it, it is a I don't know. Population shrinking is getting old very rapidly so um yeah unlike some other countries and it shames me to say my you know home country of australia is included in this um it's very easy to stay here um, once uh, all right graduated okay thanks for that thanks for that daniel and um i i know <laughs> you know we really couldn't take all the questions and I, I i tried my best to keep up with the flow of questions so i apologize if i missed a question in that process no, uh, no but, but but daniel's here and you can most certainly join him at uh you know the the icla booth so please do i think now the the booths are open now for interactions with universities and please you know it'd be a good time for you to meet daniel and continue this conversation with him along with his colleague alum uh, so head over to the ICLA booth and thank you so much for joining this session and thanks to you Daniel for making time for this break no. I'm really happy to have you Apologies. <laughs> I wish I wish we didn't have the, the, the technical glitches in the beginning but you know at least we had uh, a good conversation here yeah, yeah you, you got you missed out on the PowerPoint but you got my face so I guess <laughs> <laughs> poor trade-off I know but right. uh, thank you everyone and apologies for the delay in the, in the beginning okay the thank you everyone take care I look forward to seeing you in the booth all right.